So since you're watching this video, you're either someone who runs CNC machines and you like to waste time watching videos of people doing the same thing you do every day, or one of those people sent you this video because explaining CNC machining is probably the hardest part of the job. I made this video to save that awkwardly misunderstood conversation. As I frequent the club, often babes want to know what I do. I usually just say that I'm a machinist, so I operate computer-controlled cutting machines that make precision engineering components. I always thought that was a pretty good way of summing it up because they always seem satisfied with the answer and they kindly leave me alone to enjoy my beer in peace. Technically, CNC machines include many different kinds of automated mechanical machinery, but the cool ones that you'll see on YouTube most of the time are one of two types, a mill or a lathe. A lathe makes cylindrical shapes by spinning the workpiece and taking cuts from it as it spins. Kind of like pottery with the spinning table thingy, kind of. A mill is the reverse. It holds the workpiece still and, and takes cuts with a spinning tool. Kind of like, kind of like carving the pot while it sits still. You can cut almost anything, including wood and plastic and metal, and your own finger if you feel confident enough. Machining wood is pretty easy, but hard material like steel is much more difficult. A $700 machine can cut wood pretty comfortably, but to do the same with steel you might need to spend about 10 times that to get a stronger machine. So it's a good thing I don't have to buy drinks for all those girls at the club. CNC machining has similarities to 3D printing, but in a way they're like the reverse of each other. 3D printers add material to make a part, whereas machining usually takes a block of material and cuts away until what remains is the desired part, like a, like a Michelangelo sculptor robot. Probably the most popular cutting tool to use in a mill is an end mill. It's a lot like a drill bit, but you can push the tool sideways through the workpiece and it easily costs 10 times more. Again, no babes, no worries. A machinist will look at your cheap drill bit set from the hardware store and kind of look down on you and your entire career of making things. Machinists are often quirky people who socialize through mutual problem solving rather than just spending time with people because they want to. The worst of them are people who like scraping, but we won't get into that right now. And they can also be pretty rude on Facebook comment sections, so just be wary of them. The best way to irk a CNC machinist is to give them a 3D design file and ask, how's your sex light? I mean, uh, so you can basically just plug that into the machine and it, it makes it, right? First of all, no, it's not that easy. Uh, but it's easy to see why uh, people think that because, because of 3D printing. Uh, but also it's hard to explain why it's hard. Uh, you basically need to program every movement that the machine makes. Uh, it's called CAM software. Um, it's just super boring to watch someone use CAM software. Uh, in fact, it's so boring that you'll have more fun watching someone tell you how boring it is to watch. But even that doesn't sound too difficult, and it's usually not that bad once you're experienced. What makes it hard is knowing that if a single number in the list of thousands in the program is wrong, it could crash the machine harder than my attempts at comedy. When you know that every cut could be a mistake or go wrong, pressing the start button will usually come up to take in a moment to pause and think in silence, like you do before flushing your dead goldfish down the toilet. In both cases, you're just hoping for something good. And there's no undo in machining. If the parts broke, the parts broke. You know, with all this in mind, it starts to make a little sense why machinists socialize so poorly. I mean, imagine having to flush your dead goldfish multiple times a day for years. And on top of that, if you get caught in a lathe, it will easily pull you in and tear you apart. If you do crash a machine and you're lucky, you just break a cheap tool worth a half your week's income as a machinist, or about a hundred bucks. If you're unlucky, you could destroy your spindle worth $30,000, your job, and your ego, which for some machinists is incalculably large. It all just depends on the machine and the nature of how hard you failed. So basically, a CNC machinist should be constantly paranoid of crashing their machine. So this adds to the reasons for them to be the most antisocial people in the workplace. Except me, I'm a natural at that. Machining isn't very well known by the average person, but its existence is about as important to your modern life as cars. 
you just don't know about it because Hollywood doesn't make movies about manufacturing, I guess. That's what Elon says. Most of the time when machining is in movies, they make it look like welding with the glowing and sparks. But if you ask for help from a machinist that you know personally, they'll often go all out and make something amazing that they could charge a lot of money for. Just be careful about asking how they did it or you might wind up having an awkwardly misunderstood conversation and this video being sent to you. Thank you.